All right, we're here with Adam Matei in training for his fight next week, February 28th at the Sands Casino in Bethlehem. How's training camp going for you, man? Uh, it's going beautiful, bro. Uh, just piecing together one day at a time. Uh, thank God for the little gifts that come along the way and uh, just learning more about myself. Uh, I'm just grateful for all of us. I'm excited, you know? I'm really, really excited. So how long have you been doing training for fighting? Uh, I've been doing it my whole life. You know, uh, always street fought as a kid. I was always intrigued by that. I always said I wanted to be the heavyweight champion of the world. Right now I'm a little lighter, but you know, it's always been a quest for me. I always wanted to be the baddest guy, but this time in my life, I look at being the baddest guy in a little different way. Uh, and then really in the last year, after I committed myself to God, the last year and a half is when I really committed myself to fighting. And things really started to fall into place. And uh, it's just been a beautiful thing. I'm grateful for it. I learned how to love myself, love fighting, and love my brothers and sisters and everyone around me through doing this sport. It's uh, helped save and change my life. Uh, I'm so grateful for it. So you're, you're fighting amateur, but you fight amateur boxing and, and MMA, right? Yes, sir, and I do kickboxing as well. Uh, I come from a wrestling background. My uncle's actually the first silver medalist in the Olympics for Syria, along with my whole family. Well, I got five uncles on my dad's side, and I all have great athletic accomplishments between state champs, NFL football, silver medals. So I come from a history of uh, what I like to consider tough men, not only in the street, but you know, in the bigger and better parts of life, you know, with helping people. So yeah, this is my uh, amateur career still. And I'm doing a lot of amateur stuff because what I realized in life is uh, there's no way around experience. Experience is your best teacher. When I look at the best, like the guys like Bernard Hopkins, guys like Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather, all these guys are the best in boxing, Randy Kosher, uh, Silva in MMA, these type of guys. The one common denominator they all had the one thing that was common was that they all had experience. And at the end of the day, I realized experience is your best teacher. So that's what I'm in search of. And each and every amateur fight, I'm learning more about myself. And that's why I'm going out and putting myself in limp. I never did kickboxing before, but I'm doing it so I can get the experience. Because it's like what the great guys did outside of boxing as well. I never made like Thomas Edison I grew up before. You know, they say it took them 2,000 times to make a light bulb, and a lot of people were through them all. How does it feel to do that? He said, ah, how does it feel to take 2,000 times to do something? He said, yeah, I learned 2,000 times not to make it. That's like a joke. And that's what I'm realizing, realizing right now. So I just keep on getting more and more experience, and I realize that no matter what anyone says, it's the battle against myself, and that's what I'm doing in this whole process. And each and every fight, I learn more about myself, so I'm grateful either way. Only I know if I won or lost the battle, and that's what matters most to me. At the end of the day, I know I'm damned if I do, I'm damned if I don't. This is between me and God, and that's what I leave it to, man. If I leave it all out, I won, regardless of the outcome on the outside, I still want on the inside, and I can live with that, you know what I mean? That's a beautiful thing. So, So uh, when you were uh, going through your, your, your struggles in the streets and young, you're a little bit younger on wild, did you ever think that you would find this balance? Nah, bro. At the time, you just try to live to get by. That's how the street is. You're like, let me get the next one. All you care about is yourself. And you know, you, you become this master con man. You think you can manipulate. You think you can con anyone. You think you're a mastermind. Nobody can be nothing. You know, you're, you're a criminal mastermind. And it, it, I came to a point, I can speak to myself, where I realized that I was committing mental masturbation on call. I was the only, when I looked in the mirror, the only fool looking back at me, the only one I was fooling, the only one I tricked, the only one manipulated with my damn self. I was the only jackass looking back at myself. And that's what I realized, you know. But it took a lot of hard beating, especially how most of us are. We all have a story to tell at the end of the day. It's a matter of getting out there. We all have a struggle in life, whether it's tricking, drugging, food, money, 
materialistic things, whatever it may be, we all have something in life. Nobody goes on skates, so it's a matter of finding that and you know, uh, learn how to deal with it and become the best you possible. You know, for me, giving up to God. And I, the answer, you know, I never thought I came here. But you know, that's how God works, you know. When you give it over to Him, it's oftentimes your darkest night when God builds a bridge over your brightest horizon and puts you in a place where, you know, you could have never imagined. You know, and that's just what works for me. You know, a lot of people are like, you know, okay, okay, you found God, you found jailhouse, and maybe I did. But at the end of the day, this is what works for me. Nobody can tell me anything else because I'm the one that sleeps with myself. And I get to tell myself whatever story I want. And that's just how it is. That's just how it be. So do, do you have a background in wrestling? Yes, uh, I have a background. I was a junior college All-American. Uh, I was ranked top 20 in the, in the country in high school, three years, uh, all state my senior year. Uh, I was right there with the best all the way up through. I ended up playing football at Pitt was my decision. But you know, I couldn't stay out of trouble most of my life. Uh, battle my own people that I had to face. So, so you actually chose football over wrestling at the time? Yes, I did. Uh, man, yeah, I loved it. I was out at Pitt, man, and it was a beautiful thing. Uh, but before I went to Pitt, I ended up at Valley Forge Military Academy. I got kicked out of there with the soul charges. And then I went on to Milford Academy in upstate New York. And uh, I also left there and found myself out at Pitt. And uh, make the long story short, I ended up getting kicked out of there as well. So it was a whole process. Then I ended up wrestling after I got kicked uh, out of pit. So how long do you plan to stay in amateur? Uh, like, you, you, how, how do you find that balance between all the different amateur events? Like, how do you... you... Balance is such a hard thing to find in life, Orlando. Uh, and I'm sure you can attest to this in just about any way. You know, balance is one of those things that eludes mostly everyone in life because it comes down to everything in moderation. But most of us will say, you know, there's not enough hours in a day to do the things that we really want to do. So it's a matter of doing what you want to do most and making time for it, which is very hard to do. You have to make that choice. We all have choices in life, you know? And I, to answer the question, I don't want to put a time frame on it. For me, I believe in the deeper things. So I'm gonna let my heart make that decision to be my compass. When I feel, when I'm ready, not when everyone else not tells me I'm ready. Just like when you're growing up, it's not about being what your parents want you to be, what your coaches want you to be, what everyone else wants you to be. It's a matter of being what you want to be. And I'm going to do the same thing. When I, I feel I'm ready, I'm going to jump in. You know, but I'd like to get another 20 amateur fights between boxing and uh, MMA at least before I make that decision. Because like I said, experience your best teacher. So how... So how so how how often are you fighting that right now? Um, on, on right now this year, 2014, my uh, my goal is to get 20 fights in. Right now I'm on pace. It's already my uh, fourth fight this year. So I already fought four times in the last two months. Pace twice a month. Now you told me earlier you almost broke one of Mike Tyson's records, man. How that? What was that about? Oh, that was beautiful. I went out and kickboxed, and I just said, I told my coach, you know, I'm getting squad fight, I'm going for a knockout. I said, that's it. You know, I came off a few losses. I was like, I got nothing to lose anymore. I'm just going out there and trying something different. I went out there, hit him with a uh, two-piece combo, and I was a second away from me. Mike Tyson's record of uh, three seconds, I got four seconds. But, you know, uh, it was definitely one of those fields where you know you're on pace and you're doing something right. Uh, how's your family life, man? You got any, any kids running around? Uh, no kids yet. Uh, you know, at the beginning of my life, I wasn't around much. Uh, I was away for a little bit, so I didn't uh, think, and I, uh, I didn't uh, meet the right girl. And right now, I believe in love a lot. I have a huge family. I got five sisters and two brothers. My brother right now is actually uh, trying out for an NFL tryout. 
um, in combine. He's preparing for my other brothers wrestling at Cornell. And uh, my sister, one's a gymnast, other one's playing volleyball. And uh, my, uh, two of them play volleyball. My other sister's done with sports. And uh, my other sister's married with kids. So it's going good. I mean, so, uh, is, is this the only gym you train at, or do you have a couple uh, different trainers? I go to AMA in Jersey, and I also train with a man named Dave Hamilton, who sparred with uh, Bernard Hopkins a few times. And me and him actually met in a prison program called Confront. Uh, we just clicked off the bat, and uh, he runs with me and stuff all the time, along with Will Miranda, who you saw doing the mix with me. Um, you know, I've been really blessed, and I believe, you know, it's like a saying I've read for years of my life, when the student's ready, the teacher will appear. And uh, I believe that's exactly what's happened in my life. Uh, the more I learn about myself, and the things around me, just things fall into place. And people come into my life much greater than myself and uh, help me along the way. And I only get to keep it if I give it away, so I try to help out as many people along the way also. Because it's a beautiful thing, seeing other people accomplish their goals too. Because in a blink of an eye, one minute you're here, the next minute you're gone. So it's a matter of you know uh, helping one another, loving life. The whole process about it. What, 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 what can the fans expect out of you on the 28th? Uh, just give it all I got, man. You know, I talk cheap. I put the hard work in. Of course, I'm going to go out there and you know, look for a finish and a win. But you can expect me to give it all I got and just leave it all out there. You got any social media people can follow you uh, on? You can follow me on uh, Adam Abraham Atia, Facebook, Adam Archangel Atia on Facebook, Twitter, Adam Archangel. Uh, as well, and I'm working on Instagram right now also. All right. Uh, I want to thank Orlando and uh, the future of the game TV for uh, giving me this interview and opportunity. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to uh, talking in the future. God bless.